What you're about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you're about to see are not real-life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real-life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Starsat, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. It's our country. We can do what we want. It's our country. We can say what we want. It's our country. We can mow when we want. We can rant when we want. We can cry when we want. There are f***ing bottles everywhere. There's another symbol of a fair. Mm. Cause the girls are such gold diggers. Another guy complaining, hey, that figures. Mm. Protesters stopping me from getting home. Crime rate is not getting low. Mm. Price of petrol is so high. <laughs> Service deliveries are lie, high. Come on, everybody. <laughs> this is your country. <laughs> I know it's like it. You won't get what you want. <laughs> This is the shout of Africa. But we won't stop no, no, no. complaining. Whoa. Can't you see that this country is cock? Mm-hmm. If Zuma left, we'd have better luck. And we won't stop yeah. complaining. Uh-huh. We seek of how these people act. They've ruined this place and it's a fact. Oh. It's our country. What we want. It's our country, we can say what we want. It's our country, we can mow when we want. We can rap when we want. We can cry when we want. Happy International Day of Democracy, everyone. That was on Monday, Justice. Isn't this Monday? It feels like it. Anyway, that's the beautiful thing about democracy. You're always allowed to say whatever you want. No, you're not. Jeez, you sound like Comrade Kebby now. Oh, give the poor man a break. He's harmless. Don't you mean armless? Hi, folks. Welcome to another edition of Puppet Nation, where we do all the work and you sit on your fat asses and laugh. Jeez, Debra, play nice. Let's get right to it before you get us shut down. Jacob Zuma and several ANC heavyweights attended Gulabuse Zuma's wedding last weekend. The president's nephew, a heavyweight in his own right, tied the knot with Swazi princess Fikiswe Dlamini. <laughs> <laughs> Kulubuse, you look like the cat that got the cream. Yeah, for sure. I got the cream and the cake. What a beautiful cake it was. You know, so soft and sweet and moist. Are we still talking about... Don't um, go there, Justice. Tell us, Kulubuse, how's the first week of marriage been? Yeah, well, uh, to tell you the truth, I haven't seen my bride since uh, the wedding night. What do you mean you haven't seen her? Yeah, well, you know, my sister, we, we spent the first night together so we could, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, God, pass the Oscar bucket. Oh, I'm tired. Oh. We get the idea. Um, what happened after that? As you know, my brother, my house has uh, 50 rooms. Uh, she could be in any one of them. I have people looking for her as we speak. Did you look in the crack of your bum? Debra. Okay, scrap that. Just get her a GPS. How else are you going to find someone in a house with 50 rooms? Uh, maybe I'll just buy her another Ferrari. You know, that should flush her out. A landscape garden at President Jacob Zuma's in Kantla home cost 16 million rand. This was revealed in court papers in the 155 million rand civil claim against Nkantla architect Menentle Makanya. Tell me, Comrade Gardner, what has been planted there that costs so much? She is a security feature. That's not what I asked. The garden is a security feature. He's obviously been programmed to say that. Let me try. What's your favorite tree in the garden? The cycad. Why is that? The cycad is a security feature. It is full of pricks. Okay, but in Kandla is also full of pricks. That doesn't Whoa. mean... Whoa! Comrade Gardner, 16 million rand was spent on paving, lighting, and an irrigation system. These are... Security features! I give up. Have you planted one of those rare money trees? What is a money tree? It looks like a normal tree, but money grows on it. It's Jacob Zuma's favorite tree. 
Mana grows on trees. Well, that's what the cabinet seems to think. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Oscar Pistorius might be planning to write a book about what happened on the night he shot his girlfriend, Riva Stenkamp. Yeah, sure. The only thing Oscar's going to be writing for some time is chicks. No, really. His manager, Pete Van Sale, was quoted in a British newspaper as saying that they had discussed ideas and concepts for the book. This is the same Pete Van Sale who in a South African newspaper said his comments were taken out of context and that there was no plans for a book. Jeez, the truth seems to be the first casualty whenever Oscar and his people are right. Actually, Reva was the first casualty. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Wow, that's a big one. Oscar, what the hell are you doing? What? Oh, it's you, Oaks, again. Um, I'm watching American porn stars. Really? I would have thought sex might have been the last thing on your mind right now. Oh, no, man, not American porn stars. American porn stars. You know, the TV show where people buy and sell antiques and shit like that. Do you even have anything left to porn apart from a pair of second-hand prosthetic legs that haven't been used in God knows how long? Don't be cruel, Deborah. I'm still coming to terms with... with, with uh, <laughs> My acquittal on murder charges! Woohoo! Yeah, baby! That's what I'm talking about! I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Hey, Macarena! Yeah, you look pretty happy for a murderer. I am not a murderer. I am a, a culpable homicidist. Oh, well, that's much better. Your lawyers and family have pretty much put you under house arrest. How are you passing the time before sentencing? I dig my computer games, hey. Grand Theft Auto, Mortal Kombat, Doom. I f***ing love Doom. You check, you check everything from a shooter's viewpoint. Awesome. How thrilling. What else? Oh yeah, I also check out the internet dating sites. You know, I need a new chick, hey. But thanks to you f***ing media oaks, no one's gonna wanna date me now. Why? Because you killed your last girlfriend? No, man, because you printed pictures of me with f***ing snot hanging off my chin. Chicks don't dig that kind of thing. Couldn't someone have given me a f***ing tissue? Was that too much to ask? Is there no justice in this world? <laughs> oh, that looks interesting. Scottish independence? Now what the heck? I hear you say, what's that all about? The right to self-determination, that's what. A nation in charge of its destiny. Even if <laughs> the destiny is to be one of my golf estates. Not so, Jock? <laughs> but don't take my word for it. Let Jock, my caddy laddie, tell you all about it. Uh, I better translate. Independence is good because the English queen who is of German ancestry is married for a long time to the Philip of the Greek extraction. And therefore, her back passage swings like a broken... I I'm sorry, Jock, I didn't get that last bit. A broken what? Mel. Cat flap. Swings like a broken cat flap, you say. Oh, great. There, a vote for independence in the referendum is a vote for golf. And a future free from the tyranny of a broken cat flap? Aye. Hell, I wonder if Mel Gibson knows about this. Speaking of Braveheart, did you hear that Kosatu is calling for a boycott of that SABC soapy, Generations? Don't watch Generations! Don't watch! Thanks, Comrade Vavi, I've, I've got this one. You'd think Kosatu would have more important things to worry about. I don't know, these actors have been treated pretty badly. Actors are not people. Well, not really. What a terrible thing to say. We're actors. 
sort of. No, we're not. We're journalists. We don't make a living out of pretending to be someone we're not. Are you sure about that? Get a grip, Justice. Read the news. The Special Investigations Unit says the Encantla upgrades should have cost 60 million rand and not 216 million rand. The SIU's final report named more than 10 current and former state employees as being criminally responsible for the overspending. One name, however, is noticeably absent from the list of those to be held liable. <laughs> President Zuma, the SIU's report seems to differ with the Public Protector's report in one key aspect. She says you need to... Pay back the money! Yeah, exactly. Exactly what, Debra? Never mind. While the Special Investigations Unit lays the blame almost entirely at your architect's door... Yes, this is true. <clears throat> but he is the architect of his own misfortune. Would you say, Mr. Zuma, that loyalty isn't one of your strong suits? <clears throat> All my suits are strong, Justice. <clears throat> I have them made in England with pure Teflon. <laughs> <laughs> you are aware, of course, that your architect, Menintle Makanya, isn't going down without a fight. He wants all the contractors involved in the Nkantla upgrade to be his co-defendants. Uh, I don't know anything about this, Debra. I'm busy running our country. Yeah, into the ground. Uh, uh, sorry? What was that? I said, aren't you a little afraid that the architect or one of the people fingered by the SIU will squeal on you? Squeal? Uh, what is this thing? <clears throat> Pigs squeal. Yes, and these little piggies are going to be crying wee, wee, wee all the way to the court so that you can go free, free, free all the way to Nkantla. What Debra is trying to say, Mr. Zuma, Pay is... back the money! Precisely... Uh, precisely what, Debra? Never mind. Go back to your garden. Your money tree needs watering. I'm sorry, I'm still looking for that money tree. Okay. The chief executive of South Africa's Olympic Committee says Oscar Pistorius is free to compete even after his conviction for culpable homicide. Tabby Reddy said there were no regulations that prevented someone with a criminal record from representing the country. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. Wow, Max, you look awesome. And tweet. Oh, how are you doing, guys? Um, okay. Mr. Mbalula, this guy from South Africa's Olympic Committee said that Oscar Pistorius is free to compete. Surely there can't be... There's no discrimination in sport. It doesn't matter if you rob the bank or kill people. You can still put on a Springbok jersey. Do you really want thieves and murderers representing South Africa? Debra, seriously, given our record as a country, we will put South Africa at an extremely serious disadvantage. If we rule out criminals from selection. So when we talk about setting a new record... Yeah, exactly. A world record for running, a commonwealth record for jumping, a criminal record for culpable homicide. That certainly opens up possibilities. All the record holders are welcome in my South African team. Yeah, no losers on my team. We'll kill the next Olympics. Furendu, Murele, Skidele. The South African Rugby Union has confirmed that half the Springbok team will be made up of black players by 2019. It's all part of the Saru's so-called transformation strategic plan. Yeah, I've never heard such bloody cock in my life. By 2019, the whole team should be black. And besides, there won't be any whites left in the country by then, you know? Don't talk cock, Davi. I'm the coach now. And, and my boys are going to be around for a long, long time. Right, boys? Huh? I didn't say nothing. It's me, Heineke Meyer, your coach. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Do you read me? Come in. Buckies. Buckies. Victor. Victor. Hey, are oh, that you, coach? How, how's your dick hanging, boss? Yeah, huh? man, Buckies. You just say, how is he hanging? You don't have to say nothing ab about dicks. Mm, but, but what is... No dicks. That's fine. If I can just jump in here, what do you guys think about half the Springbok team being racially transformed by 2019? 2019? Yes, sir. That's like... Mm, 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 uh, that's like mm, four years from now. 
Jesus, pakkies. But are six years from five. now. Five! It's five years from now. No wonder we f*** up so many lineouts. Mr. Mayor, where are you going to get all these black players from? Um, good question, good question. Probably the township, say. Eh? You've got a long way to go. Hell, no. I mean, look, there's, there's one around every corner these days. What I mean is you've left all of this a bit late. Sahu also expects you to field five black players at next year's World Cup. Easy peasy. We already got uh, Beast and Twarira and Trevor, what's his name? Nyakane. Trevor Nyakane. Yeah, that oak. Okay. Hey, Divi, you know any other black players? No, but I know some black coaches. I'm very close to one of them right now. Uh, sorry, job's taken. <laughs> Give me my f***ing job uh, back. You, you, you were a cuck coach. Cuck, man. You were a cuck coach. You were the cuckest coach in the whole history of cuck coaches. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Hard Shout, where Excuse I... Excuse me. Be quiet. You're my guest, okay? I'll tell you when to talk. What a damn cheek. You people really are something else. No wonder Scotland wants nothing more to do with you. Now, where was I? Oh, sod it. With me in the studio is a man we love to hate and hate to love. He's none other than David Cameron, the President of England. Actually, I'm the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Whatever. If Britain is so great, why did half of Scotland vote for independence? You're a glass half empty kind of girl, aren't you? I prefer to look at it this way. Half of Scotland voted to stay in the UK. David William Donald Cameron. Could you get more British? Well, uh, I am. Yes, of course you are. Let's see, you studied philosophy, politics and economics at Brown Nose College in Oxford. Braze Nose College. Good God, woman, who does your research? Says the man who bummed Iraq on the basis of research that showed Saddam Hussein had nuclear weapons. That was Tony Blair, not me. Really? Uh, who the hell does do my research? Okay, fine. Forget to rock. But you're still America's lapdog. Barack Obama snaps his fingers and you come running. Try to deny that, white boy. Of course I deny it. President Obama is trying to get us to join him in airstrikes against the Islamic State. And we are currently weighing our options. Of course you are. You British are brilliant at weighing things. What did Napoleon call you? A nation of shopkeepers. Let's just move on. You have a countrywide approval rating of just 37%. That's pathetic. If I may ask, what is your president's approval rating? We don't have those things. Anyway, who doesn't approve of our president is welcome to f*** off to another country. That's the other thing. You recently had a message for tourists. You said, we will find you and make sure you are sent back to the country you came from. Really, Mr. Cameron? Oh, for heaven's sake. My message was aimed at illegal immigrants, not tourists. Jesus wept. Do you even have a researcher? Be quiet. Tourists, illegal immigrants, same thing. The fact is that you don't want Muslims coming to your country and recruiting terrorists. Are you an Islamophobic or just a plain old xenophobe? I'll have you know, girlie, that both the Labour Party and the right-wing UKIP would impose far tougher sanctions on new arrivals from Europe. Speaking of Europe. Yes. Oh, God, I miss Europe. You know, I'm of Italian royal stock. We have a palace outside Nice. Really? Why didn't you say so? I had you pegged as a commoner. Tell me more. Well, it's not outside Nice per se. It's more sort of just outside Catanzaro. Oh, yes, Calabria. The poorest region of Italy, if I'm not mistaken. It's lovely in July. Uh, and the palace, well, it's, it's more of a mansion. A bit smaller. A, a cottage, really. James, tell the driver to bring the car. Wait, wait, wait forget the cottage. I, I know how to cook. Do you know, I'm, a t I'm terrific in bed. I have my own teeth. Take me with you, please, please. Oh. What? It's the only way I could get rid of him, okay? Come on. Don't look at me like that. You know that story about the former Royal Marine who was beaten to death by four white guys after a rugby game at Kings Park Stadium? Yeah, what about it? Well, one of the witnesses is a security guard from the Congo. He said he couldn't identify any of the accused because all the white people looked the same to him. Okay, what's so funny about that? <laughs> well, it's usually you people who say duckies all look alike. <laughs> I don't know how he can say all white people look the same. I mean, sure, I can understand how people might 
might confuse me with, say, Charlize Theron or Angelina Jolie. Or... <laughs> oh, sorry, Angie. I mean, I mean, I mean, Charlize. I mean, I mean, <laughs> Deborah, sorry, Deborah. <laughs> Let's just go to a break, please. Uh... <laughs> Right, I guess you tomorrow. Guess you. I, I can't wait to guess you. Oh, yeah. My pantry. OMG. Stupid autocorrect. Black people, f you are to correct. Who programmed you? For what? <laughs> so sorry, babe. Autocorrect made it awkward, eh? Yeah. Data finished! <laughs> no! We value no! your service. Black paper! You I said paper! New data plan! Cell come. Connecting people. And then f***ing it up again. Hey, I've got a joke for you. Oh, God, do we have to do this? Oh, come on, just play along. Fine, go ahead. Okay, what do sex in a canoe and American beer have in common? I don't know. What do sex in a canoe and American beer have in common? They're both f***ing close to water. Both what? Both f***ing close to water. Both f***ing <laughs> close to water. <laughs> <laughs> and on that sad note, let's cross to our colleagues in the States. Justice, pull yourself together. Close to water. <laughs> Do you get it? Canoe, sex, beer, water, get it? <laughs> Not really, but you will if you do not shut up. Reports from Alaska say that former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin, her husband, and two of her children all took part in a brawl at a friend's party. Governor Palin, are those reports true? They're complete bullpucky, Scott. Absolutely untrue. I was not in a brawl at that party. Then how do you explain your face? Just good jeans and moisturizing twice a day. I was Miss Wasila in 1984, you know. No, I, I mean, how do you explain your eye? What about my eye? It's blackened. My eye is not blackened. Don't be silly. It's just like you libtards in the mainstream media to spread unfounded rumors. Your right eye is clearly black. Oh, my right eye. I thought you were talking about my left eye. Yes, my, my right eye is a little bit gray, but it's not from a brawl at my friend's party. I, I, I want to put that lie to rest. Then what is it from? It's from a different brawl. Uh-huh. And how do you respond to those who say our country came perilously close to having a short-fused violent maniac in the White House? <laughs> I don't think anybody who knows me would say that, Scott. I know you, and I'm saying that our country came perilously close to having a short-fused violent maniac in the White House. You pasty little bono donor! Why don't you come over here and say that again, you elk rimming hunk of a tame scrap? I'll shove my nails up your piss tube and pluck it out your prostate like a maraschino cherry! <sighs> 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 The Obama administration says that it's convinced several Arab nations to participate in the U.S. bombing campaign against ISIS. That's right, Scott. It's great news for our cause. But, Mr. President, how do you convince Arab leaders to attack their own neighborhoods? Scott, these guys never get a chance to bomb anybody. They're dying for a reason to blow some shit up. They jumped at the opportunity. It was like asking a fat kid to go to McDonald's. Whoops, don't tell Michelle I said that. I have a hard time believing that these countries would join a U.S.-led war in Muslim nations just to blow some shit up. What else did you offer them? 
Okay, look, I might have also told them that they could bomb Florida. Can you repeat that? <sighs> bomb Florida. I told them they could bomb Florida. Just just a little, and only in the swampy parts. I figured maybe it would knock some sense into the place. So you sold out Florida to beat ISIS. Personally, I think I got a pretty good deal. I mean, just listen to these news stories. Florida man charged with drunk driving a lawnmower while armed. Florida man sets himself on fire trying to burn down somebody else's house. Florida man kills his roommate, then asks Siri where to hide the body. Florida man rescued from vending machine. Mr. President, you are a shrewd negotiator. Cool! I was in the paradise! Check it out! It's a green bird, a Gina, whatever! Hey, where's the virgins? Check out the tasty panani. Is you a virgin? Oh, yes, handsome martyr. I have much in the way of gifts to share with you. Me too, me too. Ah! Why? Come back. Please, pretty virgin. Come back. Don't be afraid of the dead infidels. Uh, uh, Abu Jeffrey, Abu Jeffrey, wake up. Huh? Oh, it's you, Pfizer Michael. You're having the bad dream, yeah? I was trying to give her some head. Who? The Virgin. They like it very much when the boy gives the girl the head. Really? They like that sort of thing? Yeah. What you expect, man? Cool. Let's go. What are you doing? We're supposed to do this at a school or something. Oh, shit. We're in the middle of a fucking desert. And I want to fucking die. I'm a reluctant suicide bomber. Phew, that was a long one. At least it's the weekend. Oh, uh, you always say that, regardless of what day it is. Hey, I'm an optimist. You're an idiot. Be careful when you go to the toilet. Why, are you going to pull an Oscar on me? What? No, I'm warning you that the floor is wet. You could slip. I'll be fine. Just watch your step. Are you threatening me now? No, there's a broken step at the exit. Just a friendly little warning. Liar, liar, pants on fire. At least I wear pants. That makes no sense. Are we still on air? Uh, well, folks, that's the end of another fantabulous episode of Puppet Nation. <clears throat> We're back next week. Same time, same place. Adios, amigos. What about the woman? What about them? <laughs>